Attention Guilford County, are you ready for positive change in our schools? Introducing Bill Goble, a true champion for our students, parents, and teachers. With years of experience and unwavering dedication, Bill Goble is the leader we need on the school board. As a current member representing District 3, Bill is already making a difference, shaping policies that benefit our community. Vote for Bill Goble for school board, and let's build a brighter future for Guilford County together. Paid for by the committee to elect Bill Goble for school board. Coming up in this episode of Finding Common Ground. It just concerns me because, I mean, we saw our nephew's dead body. It just tears at your soul that you see the babies that are being killed. But you can't let passion become destructive. No, and when it becomes destructive, you've got some major issues going on. How much pressure did you get being a leader in this community and your husband's of Palestinian descent, and in the black community, if your husband black and you're black, you, you're part of the black community. There are two sides to every coin. How do we deal with racial issues when they affect relationships? Finding common ground on all those issues that we come against. There's black and there's white. And I think as Christians, we have to learn how to get together because we're not in heaven. I've met more interesting people just by God just bringing them in. Republicans and Democrats. But a lot of times, when it comes to race, and it comes to culture, and it comes to perception, even as Christians, we don't always understand. We look at it through our lenses. There's Bill. I grew up in a suburb of Cleveland called Parma. Uh, Any black people in Parma? There was not one. Not one black person, Bill? Not one. Come on, Bill, you got to have one, a a token black person, a token. And there's Odell. I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina, public housing, single mom, divorced single mom with four kids, and I came up through segregation and all that kind of stuff. If a black person drove through the town, the police would stop and escort them out. Bill and Odell are finding common ground. A part of what we have to do is listen to each other, find the common ground, and question, not questioning you like you're on a witness stand, but questioning you for a better understanding. Father God, we just say thank you for your grace and mercy and all the things that you've done for me and my family personally, but so many other families. Thank you for the healing Thank you for this great country that we call America, not perfect, this great country we call America. In Jesus' name we pray and believe, amen. Amen, amen. Dear Holy Father, just uh, I echo Odell's prayer, just thank you for America, the freedoms we have, even the ability to disagree and discuss things. Lord, we, we ask as we go through the disagreements that we find common ground, that we figure a way that we can work together not how we cannot work together. Amen. And may we also, dear Father, come together to find solutions, to have everyone come to the table and offer their solutions so that we may make the United States, our city, our state, and our globe a better place. Amen. Bill, whose voice is that, Bill? Who has that golden voice? I thought the good-looking black guy had the best voice. Bill, what did you do? You got a ringer in here. You got a ringer on me, Bill. What's, is that Siri? Is that Siri or somebody? Siri? Whose voice is that, Bill? I'll tell you what. That's Mary Kay. And she's been in radio before. She said four years when she was in her teenagers? Teenager, yes. Yeah. So our national audience, who is Mary Kay with the golden voice, Goble? So you went recruiting on me. You went recruiting (laughs) on the good looking black guy. I tell you what, (laughs) you couldn't stand for me to have the shine. You went and you went recruiting on me, Goble. He he just knew you needed some competition. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, Mary Kay, can you reintroduce yourself and tell the listening audience who you are and what you do? Yes, so I am Mary Kay Abusa Waiter, and I am uh, actually a resident of Greensboro since 1973. Wow. Um, I was elected to the Greensboro City Council in 2011. And prior to that, I worked very closely with many departments in the city and actually fell in love with it. Took the City Academy, took the Citizens Police Academy, took Impact Greensboro, and was elected to City Council in 2011 as an at large resident representative. Wow. Wow. You know, it's interesting. We're going to talk today about the whole Hamas, Palestinian, Israelis, all that. And we want to talk about it from three different perspectives. We want to talk about it from a national perspective and a local perspective. But I want to start from a personal 
perspective, Mary Kay, can you you can you share some personal how this has affected you personally? Yes, of course. Well, we all understand and even in the Palestinian community understand that what happened on October 7th was horrible. You know, it should not have happened. Uh, I would say that basically 85 to 90 percent of the people in Gaza don't even know Hamas. Wow. Can you say that again? Because we're thinking the way the national news is. Wow. So um, actually, my husband, who is Palestinian born and was born in Jabalia refugee camp, which is the one that is pretty much leveled now, it's been destroyed, it's flattened. And that's where our nephew was killed. So you had a nephew who got killed. So there was a target by the Israeli IDF across the street. He happened to be in the front of our home and was killed on November 13th, the day before his 30th birthday. Wow. So wow. you live our in- condolences. Thank, our you. Condolences. Yes. Thank you. So you, your family live in Gaza. Yes. Tell us about that, because we have no idea how it is to live in Gaza. And from the perspective of when all this started happening, Bill, I guess you were getting play by play with, you know, with phones now, Mary Kay, and everything going on. You all were getting the play by play. And it's like, what did you think when all this? Well, we basically only knew what we were seeing on TV as well, because the cell phone service was cut. The Internet mm-hmm. service was cut. The water was cut off. I mean, all of those things. So sporadically, we would get where they would have some cell phone. Even to this day, it's very hard for us in the mornings because we try about 4 a.m. calling to make sure that the family has survived. So actually, the family split. Half of them stayed in the north and half went to the south in Rafa to see who might survive. Because, you know, no matter how you feel, the, the devastation is horrendous. You know, I brought one little picture, but it's just... You know, things are blown up and flattened, and now there are people in tents in Rafa and tents on the rubble. You know, people are still trying to dig people out. So, you know, I understand why the defense forces started in retaliation for October 7th. I understand that. Do I agree with it 100%? I, you know, I really don't even know. I don't know exactly what happened. I've heard everything from the Israeli government knew it was going to happen to it was just a scary thing that happened. And then the retaliation started in order for them to defend themselves. So, you know, you hear this whole gamut of things. But I can tell you, because I've been there many, many times, that the family, my brother-in-law is superintendent of schools. Wow. He was supposed to speak at a, a worldwide conference in the Netherlands in December. My younger son and I were supposed to go in December. My husband and our older son actually went in July after not having been able to visit for 20 years. So all of the political issues and things going on have prevented us from seeing family basically for 20 years. So we have probably a thousand pictures of when Isa and my son Joey went in July. Gorgeous. You know, the hospitals were state of the art, gorgeous, you know, entertainment venues, you know, restaurants, uh, beach places to go to. It's all flattened now. Mm. So I can say even from when I went many years ago, it came from being a refugee camp into like a small city. Now, Who is responsible for helping that get there? Some people say Hamas helped them get all that. So, you know, it's very, very complicated and complex. Well, help me because I'm going to say, admit publicly that I don't know everything I think I know. And some of the audience said, Finally, Odell, you finally admitted that. (laughs) Odell? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So we saw Hamas come across the lines and the kibbutz killed, raped, murdered, da, 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 and then took hostages back. And that's the the issue, the hostages. How do you feel about hostages and everything else? Well, and, and my husband would tell you the same thing. We wish they would go ahead and release them. Unfortunately, as we've all seen in the news and it's been confirmed that some of the bombs have killed some of the hostages. 
And, you know, that's that's distressing because the more bombs that are dropped, that's the the way that less hostages are going to come out because, you know, I don't know where they are Mm -hmm. and I don't know anything about all of these tunnels. I asked my husband and son and and they know not to lie to me. (laughs) So did you see any evidence of any tunnels or any anything about ready to happen? Because they were just there in July. Wow. And they said, no, their family doesn't know Hamas. So help us and then, Bill, please jump in here and help the good looking black guy. I'm enjoying this. This this is very good. But help us separate Hamas from the Palestinian people, because it's like the Black Panthers back where how do you separate the Black Panthers from the black folk? Right, right. So so it's very difficult, I think. I think I would say from what I've seen myself Uh and from what I hear over the years from family, they just want to live like the rest of us. Hmm, Interesting. They don't really want to get into this faction or that faction. We've got nurses in our family. We've got doctors in our family. We've got all of these things. But, you know, I I think the pain for me is it's gotten to the point where there's basically collective punishment. Wow. And I am going to say that, and I may get some, you know, backlash from that, but it just concerns me because, I mean, we saw our nephew's dead body. Okay, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it just tears at your soul that you see the babies that are being killed in the hospitals and the babies in the ICU. So it's very distressing to me that we as a nation cannot just go in and, you know, so many times like the Navy SEALs went and got the bad guys and this and that and the other. So that is my question. Why couldn't that have been done at the beginning by the IDF? You know, they. I'm sure they've got special forces. And I'm just being honest because I don't know all, all these answers either. But but you invited on because a lot of our listening audience said, Odell, you are pro-Israeli. Why don't you bring someone on who's of Palestinian families or descent to give another side of the story? And I said, you know what? We are common ground. We will find someone, not that we just found you, of course. <laughs> we know you're a leader in this community. And one of the things that you did was, so you please speak freely. You all had a joint resolution. You and uh, I say firm. I, the, firm, firm, Tammy, firm. Tammy, last name, you know, I mean, first name escaped me. Can you talk about that? Because it was a heated situation down, not the courthouse, but the city hall. Yes, it was. So we had had some families and young people come and speak to us. We have a speaking session the first of the month on city council And anyone can come and say anything they want. And with all of the turmoil in Gaza, we had many people very passionate, very passionate. Some people a little more radical than I prefer, but. Young people, young young people. I was young one time. I remember picking in the signs (laughs) at red and white and piggly wig because they wouldn't hire black people to work in the store in our community. But 99% of the customers were black. So I, yeah, my 10 year old self was walking with my picket sign. Didn't really know what I was doing, but I was out there doing it. I I think we have all been there and, and, and passionate. And, you know, I'm going from the perspective of, my husband is probably the only one who grew up in a refugee camp. Wow. And I'm probably the only one. And that is true, even in much of our Palestinian community who has been in the refugee camp many, many, many times. Yeah. So they came and spoke. And the issue was they were coming to us to demand. Okay. Now, who the, who's the they? Is this uh, Palestinians? Uh, this is Israelis. This I mean, I'm talking people in Greensboro. Palestinian advocates. Okay. Got and Pal- some Palestinians, yes, okay. as well. And it was not that what they were saying was wrong because yes, they wanted a ceasefire resolution. It's sometimes the way you say it when, for instance, if you're in a professional setting or, you know, it, it's it's just the demeanor. And sometimes some people on council sometimes perceive passion as being attacking when it really, really wasn't, but they were very passionate. And I I commend young people for being that way. So I actually had a rough draft of a resolution and I was looking out in the audience and I was looking at my colleagues and I was thinking like, you know, this is not the time. 
I can't wow. I can't pull it out of my my back pocket today because I respect those who are at the podium. Every person has a right to come and speak. Yes. I also respect my colleagues enough to know that it really really helps if you discuss things first. Amen. Amen. So I pulled it back because I was ready. I was getting a little passionate myself <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> because I, I was getting tired of hearing cousins being killed and, and uh, family members being killed. And it was shortly after our nephew was killed and it, through no fault of his own, our home was not the target. He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he just had a baby girl. Uh, wow. So, you know, it's uh, it, it was just tugging at my heart. And we've all been there, I think. We've all <laughs> been there with something just makes you so passionate, you just want to scream. And so I pulled back from from doing my resolution that night, and I thought, I really need to think about this. It's kind of like when you're supposed to send that angry email. Yeah, you, and you type say, it, but you don't send it. it, but you don't, you don't send, send, send it. You don't send it. You yes. print it off and put it in a drawer right. and wait a day and look at it. But another the question, how much pressure did you get being a leader in this community and your husband's of Palestinian descent and in the black community, if your husband black and you're black, you, you're part of the black community. Right. So, I am. so did you get a lot of pushback from the young folks, the Palestinians? You a sellout. You didn't say anything. You didn't da, 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 da. Did you get a lot of that? Well, they knew I was going to do a resolution. Now, this was over, well over a month ago, two months ago. And they knew I was going to do a resolution, but they didn't know that I was going to consult with my colleagues. Because when you think about it, and this is this is what Greensboro City Council cannot demand that national leaders do anything. We have to. Right. You know, and I hate to say it, Ode, but we have to work the system. OK, well, you looking at a black man, <laughs> tell the black man about working the system. Trust me, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and you know, you go in slowly and, and you get your points across. And then finally, people start listening, because I will say even my colleagues and I'll take blame. I had not educated them very well. Several of my colleagues turned to me and said, I don't understand all this. Educate me. I, I kid you not. So how they turn to me, Bill, and say, OK, Odell, you're the black person in the room. So you are the black representative for anything and everything that happens. So you are the Palestinian in the room. So you are the Palestinian representative to explain all of this a lot that you didn't even understand. Exactly. So, you know, I did pull it back. We did talk and I had almost tabled it. Wow. Almost. And I was thinking, like, you know, I really, really want to do that. My my husband did, really didn't pressure me. He could have because it's his family getting killed. Wow. You know, his biological family. And he didn't pressure me, but I, I knew that he wished we could do something. So, actually, uh, Yvonne Johnson reached out to me. Tammy Thurm reached out to me. Now, Tammy's Tammy. Yvonne is black. Black. Tammy is? Jewish. Okay. And so, so you had the Rainbow Coalition. Where you had the Rainbow I Coalition. Had, I had everybody. <laughs> you know, but 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 let's say this for the young people because you already had relationships. You already had trust and built this, over the years. This goes back to, and maybe working the system wasn't the right word. This this is the way I see it. Is you start building those relationships early on with people. Amen. Can you help my colleague, my partner in crime, Bill Gobo, who got kicked out of the uh, school board, the Republicans sued him and everything else. He doesn't understand. Uh, they don't understand working the system or working together. You know, and, and you could use the working the system, working together, working, making relationships. And, you know, that's something that, you know, I've known Bill and Dory for a while. I've met oh, yeah. Dory, you know, and I've known Odell. The good look, Odell, the good looking black yes. guy. There you go. And, there and, you and go. I'm the one with the golden voice. <laughs> <laughs> so. There you go. There you go. So, you know, there, here we go. <laughs> so, uh, yes. So, you know, with all of those relationships and my colleagues and Tammy and, and Zach, everybody up there could tell. I was frustrated and hurt and, you know, had family members, you know, dying and, and, you know, they, they understood that part, but they didn't understand the situation Wow! because I can't even explain to you, Odell, or you, Bill, what it's like to live under occupation. Yeah. None of us have done wow. that. It's, it's, it's something that 
you know, I've traveled around the world and I get to see people that are suppressed. Like I was in Cuba a number of times. Right. And you can see that people are being suppressed by the government. I need some knowledge. Maybe you can help me with th this. Odell and I have been to the West Bank uh, when we went to Bethlehem, very short. And uh, we toured around there. And then there's Gaza. So as a neophyte, somebody who doesn't know all this, are the Palestinians that are in the West Bank and Gaza the same people, the same families? The same families? No, they are not always the same families. Okay. There are some that have crossed, but uh, you have to remember to go back when the map was showing Palestine was connected. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there were some, but now there is a huge community in Greensboro who are from Ramallah. Ramallah, okay. So that is uh, a lot of them are Greek Orthodox mm. or Christian or, you know. Um, now, where is Ramallah? Ramallah is in the West Bank. West Bank, yes, okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, then you have Gaza and the refugee camps, which are over here. So it's the same but different. Yeah. Okay. No, that's. If that's that makes pretty, sense. And then, so a two state solution, which is a Palestinian state and an Israeli state, because they're geographically separated, how do you do that? See, that's the issue because a lot was taken away during all of the wars. Yes. So I don't know why those decisions were made. Mm -hmm. I just know that there were some really bad wars. And my mother-in-law, who is 99 years old, now wow. going through her sixth or seventh war. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Is she still living? She's still living. She's still with it mentally to a point. You know, she'll repeat stories, but I do that, too. Oh, yeah. So, so you're going to see here. what this guy does. She, yeah. No, she lives in Gaza. She's in. Wow. They took her from Jabalia refugee camp in a wheelchair in the middle of the road, in the middle of in a wheelchair and pushed her four hours to Rafa. Wow. And I don't know how this woman has survived all this. I mean, it's stressful just for just for an adult. With, I don't it's think not I 90 years do, old. I don't think I. Can. My goodness gracious. So, you know, she's still she's, she's tough still cookie. alive. Tough she's cookie. Tough. When we went to Palestine in the West Bank and then we saw the Golan Heights that the yes. Israelis took. And one of the reasons they took it, it's a strategic location because it's the high ground right. overlooking the Sea of Galilee and a lot of cities. So their take was we took this to protect all those cities that are down below. And that way we keep the enemy in the next valley. I can see that strategically why they did it, particularly after being there. But we've got to find a solution to this. We've got to. Uh, you know, too many people. I, I, don't, I don't know what the solution is. And, you know, everybody says, well, maybe you can come up with a major solution or maybe you could figure all this out. And I mean, I'm probably from the, the 70s world of I just want everybody to live in peace. Amen. Amen. A and then, you know, I've been there so many times and I'm going to be honest with you. I was ill-treated when I tried to get into Jabalia. Really? Yes. It's like, what are you, an American, doing going to a Palestinian refugee camp? Now, who mistreated you? That was the Israelis. Really? They didn't want you to go? You had to cross over, and they were mm -hmm. questioning you. Well, that happened to Ishmael when Odell's friend, we were on a missions trip because his name is Ishmael. Right. They put a special stamp on his passport. Yes, yes. And, uh, so that he was marked. I was taken away and inter interrogated for three hours. Really? So, you know, wow. it's depressing. But once you get in and you're with the family, then it's all pretty much okay for a little while. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. Because everybody wants to see you and you go to all visit all these homes and they're so glad to see your children. I took the boys by myself when I was, uh, when, let's see, they were young. So they're about 35 years ago. Wow. And uh, that was the roughest trip because they couldn't figure out why I was going in to see Palestinians. Did you fly into Tel Aviv? Yes. Gotcha. Can you share the resolution oh. with us? I know you yes. talked about it, but it's so important because when you start thinking local, Bill, you have the Jewish community here, you have the Palestinian communities. And I remember that the Jewish community came to speak out against the resolution. Well, oh, is that not a fair assessment? Because I, I read the news and, you know, the media, other than the podcast of Common Ground, don't always get it right. <laughs> so I will say this. We basically had overwhelming support from the Jewish community on the resolution. Good, good. Now, there were one or two, and I will not mention names, but um, they apparently had thought we had done something wrong with the resolution. And they sent 
a few emails here and there and mentioned on camera that we were doing everything wrong. But it the way it turned out, you know, they misunderstood, apparently, that we were trying to do a national resolution and we were doing a local resolution because Greensboro had a lot has a lot of people hurting over this. Yes. Okay. And, and, you know, it's it's just it tears me apart that, you know, I'm wondering how my Jewish friends feel. And then they're almost scared to approach me because they know what my family exactly. is going through. Exactly. And being misunderstood, Bill Gobo is a student of being misunderstood. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Boy Scout. I have a merit badge. Yes, uh, there you go. There you go. We're going to give you a what, gold star. I'll tell you what, they, uh, you know, when people do that, you know, you have to, uh, I learned that uh, you don't fight insult with insult. No, you don't. That doesn't work. And it doesn't make me feel good when I, if I try and do that, I, I've done it and I like, I don't feel good about this. No. So I've learned that, you know, somebody insults me. I just say, you know, I wish we could find some common ground. I say, I'm sorry you feel that way, but you know, I'm not going to change my stance or I'm not going to, yeah. you know, I can't always agree with everything, but when people start insulting you and I know You've been through it, Odell, and, and Bill has as well. It doesn't feel too good. No, no. Because you're sitting there thinking you're doing everything and trying to do it the right way and trying to make sure everyone is included and trying to do all of these things and trying to do what's for the betterment of Greensboro or Guilford County or or church community even, you know? Well, you you uh, represented city council at large. So yes. blacks vote for you, whites vote for you. Jewish people will vote for you. Christian people vote for you. Everyone votes for you. I'm excited to hear the resolution. Yes. Yeah, let's get that. Let's read the resolution. Yeah. Okay. Greensboro City Council resolution. Resolution for peace and support. Whereas the events of October 7th and resulting conflict between Israel and Hamas has led to a humanitarian crisis affecting countless families with tremendous loss of Palestinian and Israeli life. Whereas we agree that all human life is precious, no matter what their faith or ethnicity, that the city of Greensboro has a diverse population, including many with family, social, and business ties to Israeli and Palestinian citizens here and abroad. Whereas many in our community have been deeply impacted by this conflict. Whereas this council acknowledges the deep personal impact that this conflict has had on numerous members of our community and extends its sincere condolences to those who have lost loved ones and extended family members in this conflict. Whereas the Greensboro City Council recognizes the importance of peace, safety, and the protection of all human life for individuals in our city, our state, our nation, and our world. Whereas this council urges our national leaders to do everything in their power to end this conflict and to begin the process for a peaceful, sustainable solution. Whereas we also acknowledge that harassment, discrimination and violence towards Muslim Jews and any other minorities are contradictory to the values which define the residents of Greensboro. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Greensboro that Greensboro supports and cares for its residents who have been directly impacted by this conflict. And we condemn any form of harassment, hate speech, Jewish hate or Islamophobia that may be directed toward anyone who resides in our community. Adopted this the second day of January 2024. And you put that forward, and who was your co-sponsor? Tammy Thurm. Wow. Did she get a lot of backlash for it coming from the Jewish community? That no, you aware of? no, no, no. Um, only a few who I think misunderstood totally what was going on. And the Jewish community supported it 100%. The Muslim community supported it. Uh, we still have a few young people who don't quite support it because it doesn't say the word ceasefire. Got you. Got so you. my husband stood up in that council meeting and said, he turned to the young people and he said, let me tell you all something. I have been through seven ceasefires mm. and they have never stayed. They have never been permanent. He said, what my wife put in that resolution with the help of Tammy Thurm wordsmithing with me is 
the fact that we want an end to this conflict. We want a total end to the conflict. And we want our national leaders to find, and this means globally too, national, global, whatever, to find a sustainable solution for peace. So we've gotten backlash because we didn't use the word ceasefire. From your from, community? From the, my community, uh, the young people, the the parents and the older people are just thrilled with the resolution. And, you know, uh, they came and spoke, uh, the young people came and spoke last night, and a few of them commended us for doing this. But I'm going to tell you one thing. There is not another city who right. has passed a ceasefire resolution with a unanimous vote. And ours not only basically implies a ceasefire, it says we want an end to this conflict. And I think that's what everyone wants. And I will say, uh, Mayor Vaughn was at a national conference uh, a week before last, and someone asked her about the Greensboro City Resolution, and she explained it to them. And she said, I'll get you copies if you like. Oh, we've already pulled it up on our phone. We're taking it back to our cities. Wow. wow. Isn't that great? That is amazing. That's great. That is fantastic. Once again, Greensboro starts. Yes. Yeah, so it starts the movement. You know, and there's only one other. Whoa, 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 whoa. Once again, Greensboro <laughs> starts the mu- movement. You got that? Is that in reference to January 1 with the four freshmen from the great North Carolina Anti State uh, uh, University February- who started the. Uh, February 1. That's February 1. Yes. You okay. said January. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. See, the black guy can't be. You. Thank I'll you. The black guy can't be getting that wrong now. It's February. So. Bill, thank you for your acknowledgement. It is black history. Well, I was I was talking about a Duke Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much fun. <laughs> no, just kidding. The uh, but no, I was just referring to that. Yeah. The you know, and please don't take this the wrong way. No. But was there a resolution in support of Ukraine? I was asked that very question. And you know what my answer has been, and so far it has been the honest answer, is the fact that no one asked me. Yeah, well, I don't think you've got the same passion that came out because we, you know, I grew up in a Ukrainian village. Oh, wow. In fact, in Parma, it's called Ukrainian village, and there's probably 15. Any black people in that Ukrainian village? Uh, if you look real hard, <laughs> squint your eyes. Okay. If, they, there you if go. they've been out in the sun a lot. There you go. Okay. That, uh, on okay. the summer with a tan, that's the only black you're going to get <laughs> in Parma. Oh, so you're going to get. Oh, Ukrainian <laughs> village. Okay. Yeah. I'm mad at you. I'm taking you there. One day you're coming to Parma. Okay. Yeah. All I right. can't wait to take you to Parma. So now you got one black person to hope, but let me be quiet and hear the story. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> but no, in that case, that whole area I mean, they're Ukrainian flags and people's front lawns. Right, 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 right. I mean, it's it's very passionate. And we actually had a Ukrainian pastor on. He oh, was wow. he was his town was attacked and he was on vacation outside the country when it happened. Oh. And his congregation knew something was coming, so they put away food and generators and fuel, but he wasn't allowed to go back. Oh. And uh yeah, that was that's one of our more popular podcasts. But he talks about people telling him what was going on, and uh, so it's pretty bad. But I think it's probably because we don't, you know, we have a tremendous Jewish community. Jewish community. We have yes. a tremendous Black community. Middle Eastern community. Middle Eastern Quakers. Yes, we're very diverse. This city, going back to when the Quakers were here, you know, two hundred and some years exactly. ago. Exactly. I mean, you think about the heritage we have, you know, with the sit-in that we did, but also we have the Underground Railroad tree. The the, one, the Quakers at the, the at Guilford College, yes. Yeah. And they've been they've been doing that for years, defending slaves. Walker Sanders gives a speech about when it started and the diversity. It was in fact it was such a inclusive town that Jewish men came and started their business, the Cone Brothers. Yes. The turn of the century. Exactly. So coming from the north to the south to start a business, you would think, whoa, were they, were they were out. So we were we were so inclusive. And that's what I love about our community. Yeah, we we have differences. But boy, do we we still will discuss things. And uh, we, you know, we have passionate. I love passion. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can't let passion become destructive. No. And when it becomes destructive, you've got some major issues going on. Yep. And it's it, it's really painful to see when things like that happen. I think you know about the statue that had graffiti yeah. put on it. Yes. And 
And, you know, it was a, a young man from A&T State University. And I don't know why he did that. So he was a black guy? Yes. Oh, really? So, I thought, whoa, 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 I thought he was wait from a Virginia. I didn't know either. I thought it was from Virginia. So if the police said a black gentleman from North Carolina Anti State University, HBCU, sprayed a swastika on a statue, a monument in the park of she won't take off her, her boots, boots, depicting a Jewish family or three Jewish women. women. The women. Yeah, the women and one small girl getting ready to be gassed, executed. executed. And a black guy went and sprayed that on there. And I don't know. I've never heard why. Bill, have you heard? I, That's what I, I, I heard about. I heard yeah. some guy in Virginia. I, so, I think he's from Virginia. And I, and I think that, you know, uh, I, I know that the police stopped printing like a student at or this, you know, because it does give a bad connotation sometimes to the school when it, it, somebody just did something he's a, dumb. He's a bad apple. You know, yeah, you yeah dumb something thing. dumb. Yeah, but, but you know, our bias, prejudice, and stereotype would automatically tell us that that had to be a Palestinian. either Palestinian or someone part of the Klan or... It, it, you know, the Klan don't have to worry about us as much sometime when we start attacking each other. When white attack black right, or right. Palestinian attack Jewish, Jews attack Palestinians. So the Klan can sit and say, oh, this is a good thing. And Bill, white folks, we always say resolution that white folks don't attack minorities. How do you okay. feel about a white person perspective? You know, I got a question. Yes. Well, could a black person be a white supremacist? Yes, definitely. Definitely. White supremacy is white supremacy. How do you see the white race or one race over another? You're absolutely correct. Wow. I never, wow. I never, I never thought of that. I'm like, I didn't know. It's no, one stop you know. process, the process. I'm the resident black person on this show. So any questions <laughs> dealing with black folk for expertise, well, just ask me. You haven't seen my ancestry.com. So okay. <laughs> all right. Well, you know. I did mine too. And, you know, we all kind of come from Africa. Okay. There's, well, black a- don't crack, baby. Black <laughs> don't crack, you yeah, know? Yeah. But, but let me ask, have you felt, Bill, have you felt, Odell, have you felt, Mary Kay, our city, instead of hating, we embraced? Okay, we embraced. Uh, I didn't mean to jump in. Maybe no, Bill wanted no, to answer no, no. first. It was the black don't crack. I understand it. <laughs> so I think that our community has embraced so much more than many other communities, as Bill was saying. And even when all of this started, I think we were all kind of, okay, what do I do now? Are my Jewish friends going to look at me differently? Are my, you know, because to be honest, a lot of people didn't know my husband was Palestinian. They know now. They know now. And I know that the Jewish community has had the same thing in their community. I've spoken to some of my friends that they didn't used to tell people if they were Jewish. Oh, yeah, I know. But guess, and what, now, but guess what black folk do? What you do see they? us coming. You just see us coming. <laughs> see, that's the difference. But go ahead. I'm gonna be. But, you know, it, it brings up a good point because, you know, there's the Muslim religion. Then there's the Christian religion. Then there's the Jewish religion. And there's several other religions. So a lot of times it's like. Okay, all Muslims are terrorists. We've heard that. Right. And I'm going like, uh, I don't think so. Just because there was a bad apples and, and yes, horrible things happened. But, you know, to me, and I have told people this, you know, so when Timothy McVeigh blew up the Murrow building, did we say that every Christian was a terrorist? No. Oh, oh every white Every white. white guy was a terrorist. No, you, that's a great point. That's a great point. And, and the the gentleman who killed everyone at the church in South Carolina, I can't. Oh, gosh, uh, it's leaving me right now. Uh, went in and everybody was in a prayer service and he shot everybody. Yeah. Mother, mother, uh, mother, yeah, Manuel, mother, mother, Manuel, Manuel yes, church, yes. you know, all of those things. And then I'm going like, OK, so don't condemn one race or religion or. You know, for the actions of stupid people. Yeah. You know, Mary Gay, we had on this podcast the son of the number one white supremacist who wrote the white supremacy Bible. And when Timothy McFay blew up Oklahoma and they found his pickup truck, his dad's book was in the front wow. seat. And this guy came on and he's changed his life. He's become a Christian and he's adopted kids from Romania. He started an orphanage. He brings kids over from Romania. And I asked him, I said, you know, I adopted two kids. I adopted one from Poland and one from Bridgeport, Connecticut. I said, you know, I adopted because uh, first wife couldn't have kids. I said, How, what's what's your reason? He says, well, 
When I was 26, I realized that I possibly had the gene to make someone like my dad. So I got a vasectomy. Wow. Oh, wow. That's that's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. But, you know, Dylan Roof, who Dylan Roof. committed the acts at Mother Emanuel in my hometown, and I've walked past Mother Emanuel every day because my elementary school is right across the street from it. Wow. He had black friends. Yes. So, you know, it's interesting. Really? Yeah, it's interesting. He did. Well, he's got a lot of them now in jail. <laughs> Oh, oh, Bill, Bill, oh, Bill, oh, Bill. We're, Bill. Not, we're both going to Bill. Bill, it's like, leave it to the white guy to say, don't <laughs> drop the soap, Dylan, don't drop the soap. But, but oh, me, my God. Exactly. But let me let me go. <laughs> you know what, Bill? Uh, I don't know. Do I, is there should be an edit in here? Someplace? No, no, no. That's going to go live. <laughs> But, you know, we talked about, from Mary Kay's personal perspective and how this affected her personally, we talked about locally. She's one of our leaders, and she does an excellent job, Amen. city council at Amen. large. Thank you. From a national perspective, because we hear so much, how do you feel about the national news? Because I could look at Fox, and I get one story. I'd look at CNN, I see another story. I look at the national desk, I could see another story. Where is the fair and balance? The it, Common Ground podcast. Exactly. It has to be. <laughs> All right. But but where do you get your news or your okay. updates from? So from very many sources. And um, of course, there is the Al Jazeera English that we watch and my husband watches it in Arabic. And uh, that gives us a, a good on the ground, you know, what is actually happening. It's unfortunate a lot of their journalists have been killed. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so I'm sure you've heard about that. Yeah. So and then I watch all of them. Or I listen to all of them. And, and actually, today I took a break. I, I'm starting to get a little overwhelmed with the, and I think a lot of people do with so much coming at you. And I, I heard things today, and it's just one right after the other. And I'm like, I think I just, today I need to take a break. Now, I'm a, a news junkie because I'm on city council. I am soaking up all the news to think about, you know, things locally or even in the state and all of those things. But, you know, on the national level, it, it sometimes it's hard to know what you're seeing on TV or hearing is true. What's the city council's budget? Our budget is 746 million. Bill, what's the school board's budget? A billion dollars. Wow. Both of you all have sat in those very powerful seats as we move, turn toward close, how can you sit in the seat and don't get caught up in thinking it's all about you? Because it's the seat and the power, the prestige, everything that comes along with it, it's for the position, not the individual. And sometimes in national politics, local politics, all politics are local, it appears that sometimes the position kind of gets caught up with the personal egos of the individuals who sit in those chairs, because those are very powerful chairs. You all make decisions that affect so many people. How do you do that and stay true to yourself? So I've never been in politics. I was never going to be in politics, actually. And it actually fell in my lap because I was a small business owner and I was thinking, you know, small business people are always being taxed extra. We're always having to do this. We're always having to do that. You know, who's listening to the small business person? And so I started getting interested and then I started talking to people at City Hall and then I started going to city council meetings and then I started getting interested. And like I said, took Citizens Police Academy, City Academy, all those. And I still hadn't planned on running. Right. And then I had friends telling me I should run. Well, the first two times I lost. So don't oh, worry, wow. Bill. There's there's still a lot of hope out <laughs> no, there. No, no, no. Bill's never lost. Bill just got kicked out, sued, <laughs> but, censored, and everything else. That's a little. I guess that's a little different. Yeah, that's a little different. <laughs> but you know, I ran the first time. I only lost by a hundred votes. Wow. And that wow. was brand new out of the gate. Holy and cow! At large race. Yeah. Second time. That's when they annexed the cardinal. So they put someone in who was from the Cardinal. Uh, I lost about 500 votes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I was, I was backsliding. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. So, As the Baptist preacher, you're backsliding. I was okay. backsliding. All right. Preacher Odell. And uh, <laughs> so I, I wasn't going to run the third time. So we mm. come up where you have to file in July. 
And everybody's calling me, why haven't you filed yet? Your name's not in the paper that you filed yet. You know, you've got to run, run, run. I was like, I don't want to be three strikes. You're out. You know, uh, that would be a little embarrassing. So they all got behind me and we and we won. And from day one, I maybe it was because I was in small business and I did everything in the restaurant from the dishes to clean in the bathrooms. But, you you know, all of these things and, and the, growing up the way I did, I grew up in Kentucky. You know, it was like I wasn't going into it for the fame or the ego, or the agenda. Or, or, I didn't or have the a, money. There's or the, there's no money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was like, okay, can we still pay our bills? Yeah. And, you know, all of these things. And uh, it's just never been an issue for me. And I, I really don't think anyone you speak to will ever say that I'm in it for me. How long are you married? <laughs> Why did I laugh? <laughs> Yeah. 47 years. So wow. tell me how does wow. a beautiful young lady Thank from you. Kentucky, from Kentucky, from the hills, the mountains of Kentucky or not? I'm from the Appalachian Mountains. From the Appalachian Mountains. And I have no accent. Okay. Meet a gentleman from Palestine. Palestine. Tell us the love story before we go to Bill, because I don't know what Bill's going to say. It was a blind date. Really? Really. I was a chef at the old airport restaurant. I don't even know if. Odell's old enough to remember that. Odell's 63, but, you know, nah, black folk I mean, didn't hang around the airports, you know, just so you know, we don't hang around the airports, but go ahead. But I had uh, an amazing mentor. His name was Mr. Eubanks. He was the chef, head chef, and I was sous chef. Okay. So I uh, learned the ropes there and the workers would all come in and dine and I would go out and, you know, kind of greet and things. And I had a really good friend worked in the kitchen with me, and she set me up with my husband, Issa, as a blind date. And our first date was Halloween night, 1975. Oh, wow. Where did you go? <laughs> Went to a Halloween party. What else? <laughs> okay. So he was dressed up. You didn't know what he looked like. <laughs> no, I knew what he looked okay. like. <laughs> <laughs> I had seen what he looked like before we went to the, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. the Halloween party. But yes, yeah, so we got married December 76. Was it love at first sight? Um. I would say yes. And then then I didn't hear from him for two weeks. So I thought, well, well that's that, there's good. that, you that's know, forget that. But remember, <laughs> Dude, what are you doing, man? <laughs> You're blowing it. We didn't have cell phones. You there, know, you go. So there you go. I didn't know that the fence company he worked for at that time had a job in Virginia for two weeks. And that's why I didn't hear from him. So, you know, I had kind of chalked it up. Well, that's that, you know, but sure. He came out. Came back and called you. And gave you a good stayed. reason. <laughs> and, and then we never left. Never left. Well, That's good. Great. You know, it's nice to find love. Mr. Gobo, you sat in a very powerful seat, school board. How did you make sure the seat didn't get you? And it wasn't about you, sir. It's never about me. It's about the kids. It's there always you go. been about the kids. Uh, everything, you know, being in Boy Scouts, being a church youth group leader, being the oldest of eight and 66 first cousins. It's always about the kids, making life better for them. 66 first cousin. Yeah, all within walking distance. They believe in fruitful and multiply. Man. Yes. They believe in fruitful and that, multiply. That's a village in itself. <laughs> hey, what? That's true. My grandfather was a councilman in our town 27 what? years. He was known as Grandpa Joe. And the way he used to campaign, he was in Ward 3. In fact, when we leave, I'll show you some of his flyers from sure. the 40s. But uh, the way he would campaign is he would load us up in his station wagon and he put one on each side of the street and our job was to walk down and we weren't allowed to cut across the grass and stand the sidewalk knock on people's door and hand them a flyer and say will you vote for my grandpa and he won every time every single uh, yeah, time yeah and with 66 grandkids he didn't have to you know, just we went. He had his campaign workers right there. Yeah. Well, you know what? Something. Uh, he gave us ice cream after three streets, though. Yay. America, we had a gentleman on once, a, a very prominent professor who I respect a lot. And he asked me a question. He said, Odell, what's your number? And what he was saying is, how many people, how many innocent Palestinian people has to get killed before I say that Israel was wrong or what they were doing? And I told him I don't have a number. Return the hostages. But you have a number. Can you share how many Palestinians has gotten killed that you are aware of and how many have gotten injured? So the last I looked, it was 27,860, I believe, have been killed. Well over 50,000 have been injured. And I think what 
saddens my heart is majority are women and children. And, um, you know, that, that's, that, that hurts. That hits home. I can't imagine a child having their whole family killed or a mother having to bury all four of her children because they've been killed or, or you know, sometimes the whole family has been wiped out. So Yeah, we can't. We can't. We can't we fathom can't, that. Yeah. It's just amazing. You know, even even saying going hungry, I mean, really hungry. I mean, we have hunger in this city. We, Of course we do. We have poverty. But when you go over and you see it in places like Medellin, Colombia or right. Cuba, I mean, these people are really living. It is so bad right now that um, my brother-in-law, they are using animal feed to make bread. Yeah. It doesn't surprise Making me. the it's corn just... and grinding it up. Yeah. To make mm-hmm. bread. I mean, you know, they are surviving, but they you have to say that they are some of the most resilient people on this earth to have been to, through seven wars. Absolutely. But but how about the whole don't want to go here, Bill, but I do the short version of resilience and the post-traumatic stress syndrome. And out of that may come hate. You know, and I don't mean to jump in here, but that that's perfect. I heard a Jewish professor. And a Christian professor, very well known, I could not tell you their names right now. And this was well over a month back and said, you know, the Israeli government really needs to think because they are creating two whole generations of radicals. Amen. That's true. That's a true statement. The children that have seen their parents get killed and the parents that have seen their children get killed. You know, our goal in inviting you here is because our listeners said, we want for you to bring on someone who's going to speak to and for and from the Palestinians point of view. Mary Kay, do you believe that coming on the Common Ground show, did we give you fair time to explain, say what needed to be said from your perspective? And if we didn't, Please share with our audience any and everything that you want to make sure is said before we end the show today, please. So to have the opportunity is is just amazing. And I'm, I'm very thankful that I was asked. It's, you know, I, I highly respect both of you. And I don't think there is anything else really to be said, except perhaps when it hits home, when it's your family being killed. You know, you you find something in yourself that says, I want the whole world to know. Amen. Amen. And prior to that, you may have not quite talked about everything because you're afraid there might be retribution or revenge or someone is going to come and insult you or yell at you or paint graffiti on your house or something. But there comes a time when you're like, I want people to know that our nephew was innocent and he was killed and that he didn't make it to his 30th birthday and our family home is destroyed. And, you know, there's so many, as you were saying, in Ukraine have gone through the same thing. But I I think sometimes we hold that in and don't make it as public as we should. And I I I will take blame for that. I agree with that. I think, you know, the voice needs to be heard because all we hear is Hamas. You don't hear about the Palestinians that are innocent victims. Right. And you brought that to our show, and we thank you very much for that. Well, listen, I thank, thank you all. You. I thank you very podcast. much. Yeah. One last question. What was your nephew's name? You kept saying your nephew. Yes. nephew your nephew had a name. What was his Hassan name? Abu Zawader, and he worked for the United Nations. Wow. And I got married about a year and a half ago and had a three-month-old baby in Salma. And How's Salma doing? She's good. She's good. Of course, you know, they're trying to make sure she's fed and taken care of. And the poor widow, I mean, she is just distraught, distraught, yeah. still distraught. Well, and she's in the middle of a war. Too. And she's in the middle of a war. Exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know how you, how you deal with that. But, you know, I have to say that this community and, and I think, you know, I will commend we have several new rabbi Jewish friends. Who, explain who, that. Explain, yes. Explain that. Yes. So. We have a friend in, uh, I don't really don't know if they want their names mentioned, okay, so I well, may don't, not. Don't name yeah, but names. we have a really good Palestinian friend in Raleigh, and he, he had told me several times, you know, you need to 
get to know this rabbi and you, this other rabbi. And well, actually, one of them had a, a piece in the paper. And now I can't think of his name. Uh, but I said, you know, you need to reach out to them. And of course, you know, you put things on the back burner. Yeah. So then when our nephew got killed, the, the local media talked about it some. And there was a little article in the paper. And those rabbis had seen that. And they both reached out to me. Oh, wow. man. And then we met. Wow. And then I invited my Christian friend who is a minister. So we sit there and we've got the rabbis, the Christian, the Muslim with my husband there. And, you know, all of this is it's kind of like the old joke, you know, a Muslim, a Christian and a, a Jew walk into a bar. Right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's and I'm not trying to, you need make, to add, a, add a black man to yeah, a, well, a, a good looking, slim, <laughs> trim black man, because I want you to know I lost a pound or two. Who lost a lot of weight oh, and, and, and his clothes are just hanging off. Thank him, but, you, thank and you, not thank not you. to make light of it, right. you know that. But uh, it just. You know, we're building even more relationships. It goes back to that. And sure, there's a few who really don't like me, and that's okay. That's that's hard. But to they don't like take. you because of your part of a Palestinian family. There's a few people like that, Odell. I've I've been through some things like that. Yes. And what what I get, and it's not about me, but people like Odell, you're black, you're a Democrat. Why do you endorse? Why do you support Republicans from time to time? Why do you hang around with white people from time to time? And my argument is I don't endorse Republicans from time to time. I don't hang around with white people from time to time. I endorse people and I hang around with people. And I think that finding common ground is one of the things that we do. And that's why it was not a stress or anything for you to come on and have free speech to say whatever, because every voice has to be heard. Yes. Bill, Odell, Mary Kay, what do you all think how all this is going to end? The conflict? I can't see into the future on that because we're just taking one day at a time and just hoping for survival. I do think a solution could be found, but you've got to get the people who are making those decisions at a table to find their common ground. Amen. Well said. I bet if all well the said. representatives at the table were females, this would be done. I agree. I agree. And I know, I, I know agree. I'm going to get all kinds I of agree. on that because, <laughs> hey, y'all take care of business. We bring our male testosterone and argh, we'll fight over. Well, let me leave that alone. Mr. Goebel, you're going to close us out. Mary Kay, thank you for coming and sharing. It's thank been a you. Delight listening to you and telling your story and keep up the good work in the council. Don't thank let, you. Don't let the uh, the little little meese that nip at your heels bother you. I will try not to. And if you ever need a female voice on common ground. You, you've improved the show <laughs> tremendously. I would be happy to offer to, my services. What I have to put up with here. <laughs> if Odell someday doesn't show, you can call me, Bill. Listen, listen, black folk might show up late. <laughs> we call that CPT time, but okay. we will show up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for being on the show. Thank you all so much. This has been delightful. You're welcome. Good. Bye bye. Bye. Find Bill and Odell online at thecommonground.show. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group, all rights reserved. This podcast is brought to you by Yes Weekly, the triad's largest circulated and best read weekly magazine. You can also find us online at yesweekly.com and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes Weekly, your trusted news leader for local arts, entertainment, music, food, and more for nearly 18 years. Whether you're a big, medium, or small business, managing and growing the bottom line is important. Focus CFO brings the experience and financial acumen of a Fortune 100 Chief Financial Officer to your company at a fraction of the cost. PNL help, internal reporting processes, or any business transitions or events, Focus CFO will help you and your team have a CFO in your company's back pocket. Focus CFO. Learn more at focuscfo.com.